Well, if you've watched uh, the first two videos, I'm going to try to uh, talk more today about what I'm doing, how I'm proceeding with this painting. The first two, I was more just trying to see how the video editing and everything like that was going to go. But today, uh, I'll try to, what, whatever we get to, I'll try to explain why I'm doing it and uh, what's the reason behind it. But uh, this painting, it, I, I let it rest for a day for the most part. I mean, it, for we kept our first couple layers pretty thin. Uh, it's it's pretty much dry. You couldn't you couldn't destroy this if you wanted to, but uh, that's going to help us for what we're going to do do today. But uh, I, I was looking at it and I, I thought I, I I love how rain how you put incorporate rain in paintings and uh, the drama it creates and the atmosphere it creates. So I figured after thinking on it, I believe I'll add add the first rain effect onto this painting and we'll go through and detail the fisherman now a little bit more and maybe some foreground stuff. And then uh, you'll see how the rain's done, especially on the few paintings that I've posted, how you get that effect. It's, it's a few layers, but uh, it, it, it really creates a sense of atmosphere in your painting. Instead of just being a pretty sunny day every time in a painting, you want something that the viewer looks at and it kind of creates some emotions to it. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to put, I got my linseed oil thinner mix. I'm just going to dip my brush into it. Just, it's just a little old cheap uh, one inch chip brush. I mean, you can get them from Lowe's. Uh, Walmart, I think, has them, but any little hobby store. Uh, I mean, th this is one of my main tools that I use, but uh, we're going to get a little bit of white, just a touch of blue. of blue and then we want to gray that down and a lot of in, in a lot where I see some people mess up you, you, you get the, the collar too vibrant from the start and then you don't have anything to build on just like out in nature if you look out everything's got gray in it and uh, nothing's nothing's really pure collar until it's getting closer to you and you'll see more and more collar but that's the same thing in painting just like this guy and this guy, we had to start off, a lot of these collars have been grayed off to give us our base to start building our collar onto. You have to have that gray. But what we're gonna do, get that blue white, we'll get a little bit of light red, just a touch of light red. And we will get this, what is this color that I have? Term transparent oxide red. I like it because it's a little bit more of a uh, brown red. but it'll create a nice grayed off collar. And you might be able to see in that brush, I don't know if you can or not, wherever the camera's at. But I mean, it's, it's blue, but it's, it's a grayed off and it's not a stark bluey blue. Like if you look out in the sky today and you said, man, that's just pure blue, which it's not, it's grayed off. But only thing you have to do when you load your brush, get some more paint on there. You just start, hold your brush light, and you're just going to come down to the bases of your figures because this is the first little veil of rain. Like whenever it's raining real hard and you look out in the distance and you see that misty sort of effect, that's what we're trying to create here, that veil, and we'll add some colors back here. But for the most part, they're going to be muted out because of the rain. But you just come down and you start pulling. You want to pull straight down on the painting unless it's a really windy day and you've got a you've got a little literally a tornado or something kind of blow, blowing your rain but we're going to come down to the top you can even come into your figures a little bit so you don't stop short and then you get like that little line around it you don't want that it doesn't look natural but we're just going to pull down all the way across Coming down to where I started this misty area where the water uh, met the bank on the other side. We're pulling right down into there. Here, we're just getting it. And what I like to do, you don't have to, but I like to wipe my brush off. 
get it good and dry. And then come back across and kind of just blend that out a little bit. You don't want it too pronounced. Especially down here at the, the bases, we're going to want this misty area to come up. And it doesn't hurt if you come all the way up like that, but we're just kind of blurring it out. Yeah, I don't know how well that's coming out or how you can see that on the camera, but uh, once we get, once we get the, the uh, other effects added in, you'll see it. We'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll put some collar up here in the, the trees before we come down here. Just so you can sort of see how it looks. We're just going to grab cadmium yellow, a little yellow ochre. Now we don't want this to be just a little bit of thinner mix. Get it loosened up. Now we don't want this vibrant, this color vibrant either. Because once again, we've got that veil of rain coming back here in the background. So the complementary color for your yellows is your red purples or your blue purples, whichever side you want to go to. So I'm going to add, uh, I forgot my one red. Let me get the red. A little brighter red. I like mixing it in a little bit. But we're going to take a drop of it, just a little bit on the brush, mix it in, just a, I mean, just a little bit of blue. You don't want a whole lot of blue. It'll eat everything up. And then when you're coming, you, you, you don't want to be real. Let's get a little thinner. You don't want to be real exact on here. I mean, you just think tree shapes. Like we're going to have we're going to have some light coming in from this direction, so just think of groups of collar where the sun would be hitting through, like the sun's poking through this rain. You're just going to have little groups of collar hitting. You don't want to cover the whole thing. You want to leave a lot of this gray, these grayed off areas. But just like here, you got one tree coming out a little bit now. Like this is a big clump of this these trees right here that's getting highlighted. And you always, you want to vary your your highlight. You just don't want the same yellow collar looking across there. You can add a little bit more blue and get more of a green look to that mix to add some cool to your warm. Always alternating cool and warm collars even while you're highlighting. We can put some of it up under there. It almost, it automatically looks like like there's a little bit of shadow leaves in there. And this this layer still, it's not real thick, it's pretty thin. Because we won't we don't go to the thick paint until we're putting the final touches of highlight on there. But you can see how that dark is starting to separate this collar, and then it's like there's a shaded area, and then we'll come back with a brighter collar here. And it'll give you your layers in your painting that you're looking for. So your painting doesn't look flat. It actually looks like a forest that's moving towards you. We'll just go back, get some more yellow. Get a little brighter yellow. And you don't have to dip your brush every time into the center. Once you get your mix going, you, it, as you practice, it'll get, it'll get easier, and you'll know when you should use add some thinner to it and when you shouldn't. See, we're just we're still we're being loose. We're not trying to paint treetops in there or leaves. We're just putting the collar in, and the brain will automatically pick it up when you step back and look. 
and the viewer will think that uh, and it'll make sense to the eye and the brain that that's a, a tree collar because I mean I'm not I'm not doing anything trying to draw a tree out I'm just putting collars in there to make it look like a tree if that makes sense We'll come back and throw some darks in. Give us a little bit of shadow. Same thing, all I did was added some blue to my mix, a touch of red, a little bit of that browny red, just to darken it up a little bit so we get a shadow up under here. And we're not gonna kill everything that we did. We're gonna leave a lot of this dark because it's, it's way over here in shadow. And you don't want to get too bright. You don't want to get too bright in your background because you don't want it competing with the uh, highlights on your figures. This, this is this is the main story right here. These two guys. This here is a placeholder. The, this little scrubbed in stuff back here. It looks like a hillside cloud. That's just a placeholder to put you in a scene. This is the story right here. And this foreground will add a little bit more. But you don't want this placeholder competing with these two guys. come back I lost some of my rain effect and we'll just we'll just come back and we'll throw this back over top just be careful so you don't smear everything everywhere this this has been some trial and error and I know what I can and can't get away with with this so I'm just going to put that a little bit of rain effect I didn't clean my brush. I mean, we're just looking for a bluey gray green collar. It doesn't matter. And we're going to put that veil back in there to kind of blur out those collars in the back. It's in this, and you could go back and you could take a thinner brush, you could add, or you could take this and if you wanted to, just put some paint on the edge and kind of strike you down some tree trunks and everything. But I've got some in there you could still see. I don't want to add too much towards the end when we're highlighting everything for the final time. I'll go back in here and put little spots of light on the leaves or in here on these tree trunks, and it'll pop out where I think it needs to be to uh, balance the painting out. But for now, we're not going to worry about that until these two guys get brought up. Okay, just cleaning my brush, my brush out. Okay. Now we're going to go to start these guys. And we'll start, we'll go, we'll go ahead and throw highlights, a little bit of highlights on this, just so you can see this guy come. And it, it, it needs some work, but it depends on how much time you, you could, this could be just a few more highlights. This painting could be almost done now, and you're just looking for a more impressionistic of the figures. Once we add some highlights and some outlines, and you step back and look, what's well, going to look like the sun's beaming down on this guy and this guy, and all this in, all this in here you wouldn't have to do bring it up much unless you want to detail out more, which I'm going to do, and it would still look like a good painting. But on this side, see the color of the sun's yellow, so we're just going to grab some white. And this paints, it's, it's not thin, but it's not thick yet for our final highlights. We're just going to grab that, grab some cadmium yellow, some yellow ochre. And we're going to, we're just going to start bringing this guy's hat out a little bit.
this is the sunny side where it's hitting I mean just adding that little bit now it looks like you got I mean all, all we did is a little bit of yellow and put uh, that collar on the uh, yellow and white and put it on that side of the uh, hat and it pops it out now we'll go to this side it's sort of a bluey the whole even the waders down here in the jacket was everything sort of a bluey collar so we'll get some white we're not going to put pure blue highlight on there but we'll grab a touch of blue and we'll get some red just to make more of a mauve collar and then we'll get some more white to brighten it up and of course it'll 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 help it look like there's some rain coming off that jacket but i don't know if you can see that collar it's it looks white there but it's not it's it's got it's sort of a bluey gray even on the highlight there But all you're doing, you're thinking of looking at your photo, where's the uh, light hitting, and you just drag it down. Same thing on the waders down here. Except the lights, see the lights falling down this way, but on the waders, you've got some creases in here. So we'll add, we'll come back and add some different midtones, but to make your creases. Of course, the creases are running this way, so you're going to pull your highlight this way. And that's about there all there is to it. And we'll, I'll go ahead and show you. I'll, uh, I'll get a darker tone going here. This is a good time to do this throw some we want to mute that down a little bit so we'll throw some yellow in our mix for the midtone and it's got red it's got that red in this blue so it's not going to turn a green on you but it's going to turn a bluey gray Now we'll go a little bit darker. And I don't want that. That's not dark enough. I want it dark up in there. We'll come down and separate this so this looks like his legs go in the right direction instead of this part hitting. See, we're just darkening some of our darks up on this guy. This whole side is pretty dark, so we're going to, all that work we did there, we're just going to cover up a little bit more with dark because there's not much, there's not much light hitting this side. some darkers down here so this side really pops and it'll help create that illusion of folds yeah and up in here he's a little he's a little darker up here in the jacket now to one little trick you can do clean your brush out Wipe it off, get it get it fairly dry. But you can come back here and start from the light area and kind of drag back towards your darks and it'll automatically give you that transition of uh, 
light to dark and give you that mid-tone in there to help create that illusion of a fold. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how how well you can see that on the camera, but we need to bring. Let's see, he's coming down. We need to bring this. That's where I'm out. I need to bring my leg on over a little bit. The leg comes all the way out this way. See, this is where you start. Uh, bringing your figure out and making little changes to it just like right there when I first the first two coats on I didn't uh, get the uh, leg out there far enough we can start cutting in there now it looks better and you have this one light coming across here This one little light streak on this fold. We'll just come back with this. We'll come up one collar in a minute. Or later on when we highlight that. Just drag that collar back into that other wet paint. dark. Let's see, this needs to be cut down a little bit. And there we go. Starting to come out better. Now up here on the fishing net, it'll be the same thing. Just get you a, a, a bluey gray collar with the same mix we had up here. We're just going to try to put some more lines in here to kind of create the net we're not getting too technical on how we go about this it's all impressionistic you're just trying to create something that looks Like a net. That's where people get in trouble too. They try to get too precise. And then it doesn't look right. And you can tell you got too nitpicking with it. some of these more of these get some darks put back in to uh, cut your lines out a little bit make it look like a, a net in there There we go, it's coming up a little bit. We'll work on that part later. Now we're gonna come over here. We're gonna get a more, a little bit more collar in our orange. We're making our pack. 
here. Now we can grab some white. We got a little bit of white hitting or it could be the raindrops hitting whenever we get done. That'd be up to the viewer to decide. Darker, darker orange, red looking collar. There we go. All we're doing is striking lines in here to make it look. I mean, we're not we're not being technical at all or too precise. We're just putting brush marks in there to make it look like a pack on the, on his back. Change his collar on this up just a little bit on his on his uh, see it comes into here the upper part of his waders and then this is on the where his waders are coming down the net and that'll give you the feeling of this net being transparent too with the collars coming across. Get you a blue mix up here on the shadow part of the hat. It's a darker blue gray. Just pull down. And there you got it. Then come back. With dark. A little swipe of dark. For his hair right there. A little swipe of dark. Coming in here. For his hair. There's a little bit. There's a little bit of dark up under the bill of his hat where it's a little darker. There. This one little part of his neck, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's going to have a little bit of highlight on it. So we'll just grab some light red, a little bit of yellow. Maybe a little bit of white right here in this yellow white mix. We're just going to make a mark for his ear and coming across his neck. Here. And that'll give you the illusion of light coming across and if you want to we can go ahead I'll go since that's such a little area I'll go ahead grab a chunk of white and this is pretty thick paint chunk of white with that same mix add some yellow to it and we'll just put a, a pretty big thick highlight right here where it's hitting that uh, neck and that's it you don't go back and and work it over it 50 times trying to blend it in. Just chunk it on there and leave it. Same thing on his hat. Grab another chunk of white. Just a little bit of yellow. And where the sun's really hitting, we'll chunk. This is where you need a soft white paint too because if you get that... Uh, thick chunky uh, paint it, it doesn't spread easily and you, you'll just you, you'll aggravate yourself to death 
and we come across and that's about the final highlight on that hat I mean it, th that's basically where you're working towards the end I'm just going ahead and do this to show you now but towards the end you're really getting chunks of white paint and uh, laying on where the sun's hitting, laying on that highlight really thick. And that way, you, it looks like uh, you got certain areas. That, that's what's going to pop your figure out too from the rest of the painting. And uh, it'll grab the viewer's attention. Come back here. We'll just put a. This is pretty thick. We'll just put a dollop of paint down through there, just like that. That guy's getting pretty close to being done. We can come back. We'll have to we'll have to work on him some more later. Just pick a few things out, but to make this net look more realistic, we're just looking at our photo and uh, how the lines where it's the the lines on the netting are thicker. And on the on the rim, this is the edge of your netting. We'll put a just the indication of the outside rim. And of course, down here is where the uh, handle comes out. It's got a little bit of green tinge, so we'll just add some yellow. We'll come. Highlight that side, then add a little bit of darker color on the back for the shadow. Just a blue and red mix. Don't don't over mix your collars either. Keep them where they're where they're sort of back and forth between a warm and a cool, even on your darks. I mean, we're just putting a swipe there. To make it look like a, a dark side of a handle. And, yeah, we'll leave that guy a little, alone for a little bit and we'll work on this next guy. He's got the same thing going on. A little bit more brown in his hat though. Back this way. That's too much. Just adding brown to that to transparent oxide red that more brownie red to the mix to create the highlight side for this guy's hat there we go and then we'll grab some darker blue and we'll add some brown and some red just so it has some warmth to it on this side of his hat. And while we got that dark, let's grab some darker for his hair coming up. We might lighten it up here since it's further away. There we go. Yep. Got some white in there somehow. There and here comes this guy's. 
beard coming across here. He's got sunglasses on. They're kind of right up in here. Now we'll just since it since on his hands we can put a little. There's a little bit of highlight coming on the edge of his hands, but up here in his uh, face, it's still pretty sh in, in the shade. So we'll just make a darker red. And the complement of red's green, so you can add some yellow and a touch of blue to uh, tone that red down. And we'll try to get his facial features, just the indication of them. That's still too dark. There we go. Get some more yellow, lighten it up even more. If you're not happy with the collar always always remember when you're lighting up collars first try a yellow or a brown before you start adding white to it because uh, white's gonna make it stand out just a little bit too much it will come down Come down the just a mark down the bridge of his nose, so it looks like there's a nose there, maybe on the outside of his ear. A little bit of a you ain't got much neck showing down in here, but you got a little bit there. Now, like I said before, let's uh, get that transition on his hat from the dark to the light just wash your brush off get it fairly dry and start dragging don't work it don't overwork it because then you'll be in a world of hurt and it'll start getting muddy on you but work at across and it will give you that mid that's a great thing about oils it'll give you that mid-tone and uh you don't have to hardly do anything. And if you wanted to come up and highlight him a little bit more on his hat, mix up your lighter collar. There it comes. Maybe drag a little bit of it to help mix. Yeah, that looked pretty good. And we're coming back in his jackets. More of the light orangey collar, so we'll get some red. Light red, yellow. And we'll see what that gives us. That's a pretty, pretty bright orange. And we're, we're keeping in mind again how the light would fall off this jacket. And the way his is uh, made, it's sort of just in folds. It's a thicker type of jacket. You've got some folds in there. Then you got the light falling off this arm sleeve. Then we'll come back. Get a darker red with some red, yellow blue to make a darker brownie orange you can start putting some folds in here and we're not trying to be super exact with any of this I mean I could work this painting for uh, two or three more days after this layer comes in but I, I, I like I like more brush strokey looking paintings. I don't like the, kudos to the guys that do the more realism and I mean they work it down to where where it actually looks like a photograph. But I like the uh, I like the more impressionistic look.
yeah, you have to know what you're doing and do it well. But still, if you just lay the collars in the right spot, it's going, it's going to look like someone out there when you step back from it. Now, when I'm right on top of it here, I'm seeing a lot of brush strokes, and some of it doesn't make sense. But as soon as I step back, which you need to do a lot, it'll, it'll look like that figure. That, that, that's what you're trying to get, that painting that looks nice from viewing distance, not standing right on top of it. We're just, uh, no, uh, yeah, it's not what I'm wanting. Get some more yellow and red. You get a touch of white for his hand, the highlight on his hands. There we go. And since this guy's further away, you're not going to see. Yeah, we're going to put indications of how his hands are, but you're not going to get. You're not going to get a lot of detail. See, just like that, you put that little bit of light collar. When you stand back and look, it looks like the. Uh, Sun's hitting on his ear here, but when you're up here close, it just looks like I made like a backward C stroke, and uh, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. We'll come back and get a get a brighter collar, get some thicker white, and we'll just put. See the sun's hitting right on top of his hand right here, top of this thumb, and right along this pad of his hand where he's holding on to the pole, and up here on top. We'll put just a little bit on his ear. And the same thing, we need to go back. You don't have to do this now, but I'm going to go ahead. But we'll put a thicker. Thicker touch of paint so it looks like. He's already highlighted. If you, if uh, this this takes a little bit of trial and error too, because you got to be gentle with your brush strokes or not, the paint's going to mix. If you want to, like this layer here, when we at, brightened up this jacket, just leave that for a few hours, because I mean the layers still aren't real thick, and it'll be tacked up enough where you can uh, come in and lay some thick paint down on it. But for this, I'll go ahead and do it. We're going to get some yellow, red, some white, some more red. And we're just going to, we're just going to put indication of some light falling on these creases that we created in this jacket. across his arm here and the light of course gonna fall down his arm so just pull some brush strokes down it'll look like that lights bleeding down his arm and since we're gonna have rain in this painting it'll sort of look like some rains falling off of his arm where he's got it held straight out now his backpack Back here was more of a uh, grayish, red, yellow looking collar. We need a little bit of white. And it's, it's catching a lot of the sun. So we'll come in, lay some collar across it. Got a little green in there, but that's okay. And there's there's your next highlight. And to go up, grab you some white. Thick. This is the thick paint. Just grab some yellow. Let that mix up. You can just drop. Drop some brighter highlights on him. 
maybe get a thick, thick white. We'll put a, a dollop there. Maybe up there on his jacket too, we'll put a couple of, just a little. See, this paint's pretty thick. We'll just put a, there. Now we just need to come down, add some, see his, his waders were more on the green side. So grab some yellow and some blue. A little bit of white. There we go. We'll just come down. Well, that didn't get bright enough, but we'll go ahead and throw some of this color in there. We need it anyway. Got some thicker paint on there now. There. Let's go to the opposite side and add a little bit darker, a little bit darker colors in there. Just to give it a little bit better contrast, a little bit darker. There we go. Really looks like he's in shadow on this side. We can go up here and add some of that dark just to help it out a little bit. bit dark in here there clean your brush out dry it off a little bit just drag some of this across Just getting a dark, dark to add some lines in on this side. Maybe add just a hair darker up here in his hair. There we go. Now we'll come across in his pole. You can tell where I put the light little line in there last time. So we'll just add a little bit of dark to that. To help gear that up back of the back of the fishing rod rod goes down into his hand. Maybe a little bit there. There. And we'll add a little lighter collar. Red, blue, white. Maybe a little bit of brown in there. We'll come back.
maybe just like this. Let me get a just the indication of a line coming across. There. back down a little bit a little thick there we go I got a little thick with the pole so we'll let this rest a little bit when we come back and we're doing a little bit more on the background and stuff we'll cut we'll use our background tree collar to cut this pole down a little bit but now working we'll move down I mean, he's he's fairly. We'll we'll do some tweaking on him, but he's fairly done. This guy's getting close to being done. We'll we'll do some tweaking. We'll move into the uh, water here. Add some brighter colors. We're just getting a mix of uh, yellow, blue, and white. Putting some sun tweaks in there. some lines use this collar to cover up some of these brush strokes same thing here we can use the water collar to cut down this pole handle so it's not so thick just drag it so it looks like it's part of the water back there get some a little bit more blue we'll get a little cool to go up against that uh, warm and we're thinning this paint down quite a bit so it will flow and this is just trial and error on what thickness you want your paint to be there's no magic I can tell you we'll dip it once or twice and you'll be okay it just takes whatever you feel is best for you come down in here and add some strokes of stuff to like the water's seeping up here in these rocks and just barely covering them we're just adding we're just adding lines to uh trick the mind into thinking well this is water running over top of this these rocks and when you sit back and look at it that's what it's going to look like There we go. Now we'll get wash that brush out. We'll go back to to do this rock area instead of fiddling around with that short brush. We'll go back. We'll get a little little bit more highlights on this, but we'll go in and get us some white just so we can cover some more area quicker. Some red, maybe brown. Maybe throw a little blue in that too to cool it off just a hair. 
maybe a little bit more. I like the way that's looking. You can just come in. You can move this so you can see what we're doing. You could take a, and we may do that too towards the end, take a palette knife and uh, uh, add some thicker paint onto these rocks. That's one thing too. Towards the bottom of your painting, keep that darker on your corners and on all of your corners because it'll force the, the viewer's eye up into the painting. You don't want a big, bright, sunny area looking down here, and the viewer's eyes all the way down here in the corner of the painting. You want them. You want that to come up. You want their eye to come up and focus on these two guys, the main story guys. See, I'm not, I'm not doing anything real, I mean, I'm not trying to be technical or nothing because this is a placeholder too in this. And we're just trying to put indications. So don't, don't get, don't bog down trying to get too technical because you, it'll just, it'll drive you nuts. I've been there. And you'll be wiping it off, wiping it off until you get aggravated and you don't want to do it anymore. But we'll leave that for now and we'll, we'll come back later with the knife and add some so you can see how I do some with that we'll go ahead and we'll add some rain effects to this so it can be drying so we can touch up or add as we need to later on but all you're doing is to take 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 you a thinner brush it, it, you can use a numerous one of them. I got this uh, number one. It's actually a watercolor brush, but it holds the, the oil paint so well when you're thinning it down that it works well for what I'm doing. But all I'm going to do here is get a bunch of roll my brush in the white, grab some blue, some brown and red, just to gray it off. We want it, we want it more towards the cool side but you can I don't know if you can tell yeah you can you can sort of see it but see how thick it is on there and I mean it's it's like whenever you saw Bob Ross doing mountains and he's talking about hold it with two fingers it's the same thing hold this brush pretty light and all you're going to start doing is coming down from the top and get some more white And you're just going to start touch touch down and lift off on it. And this will give you bigger drops of, put some in the dark areas here so it looks like it's falling. You can really see it. It'll create that, uh, that got a little bit too much. We'll have to wipe that off and fix that. And then down here you can put like the water's the splash is hitting the water just get you a, a big glob of paint be 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 careful with it though and uh, it'll look like raindrops hitting the water Of course, stay loose with this too, and we're just we're just throwing these in here. Random. We're not going to get too too many. So we're just trying to create an effect. We'll put a couple in here on him so he looks. There's a good one. It landed right on top of his hat and splattered. And 
and some of them that you don't like, you can come in and kind of bleed them out. Whatever you think was good, bad, and that'll help you create a mixed to misty area back here too, and it kind of creates a little bit of drama. There we go. And one last little thing you can do, you don't have to, but I've done it before and I've liked how, especially with horses running through the water, well, let me fix that little dark area that's gonna drive, that it's gonna drive me nuts looking at that. You don't, like I said, you don't have to do this, but I'll show you this trick too. Uh, you probably have already seen it on YouTube and this and that. But uh, you can take, well, we can take this, we'll just use this one. But you can take this, you're getting pretty, well, you, you might want to thin it down just a hair to, uh, for your, depends on how thick you want your rain. But you could do this. And don't don't go overboard on this, or you'll cover everything up. But just come back and load it. You can see how loaded up it is. And we're just going to flip a little bit in here. Might need a little bit more thinner. And this is just a blue gray mix too, with that brown, red, and blue and white. But we're just going to. Flip it in here a little bit. Come all the way across your fingers. Don't go haywire because then you'll cover them up. Then you can come back, get your thicker paint. It's going to represent your thicker, your closer raindrops. And bam. we go. Well, we might add a little bit right here. Yeah. Flip it a little bit harder. There we go. I don't know how well you can see that, but if I bring it up, see, you can, st you can start seeing the, see the rain and uh, this guy over here, but just see, see the brush strokes. I mean, I didn't do nothing on this arm but just drag the white down it looks like sun's hitting same thing if i can get his leg in there but it looks like that sun's just hitting real sharp on the back side of this leg on his on his uh little backpack area here in his net i mean all we did to create that illusion of that net we took some blue gray and then added us a little bit of dark in here to make it look like it's shining through to his vest and then we went back with a little bit whiter light i didn't blend i didn't do anything but put a few brush strokes and up close, they don't make sense, but all it was is like this cre to create the cone shape at the bottom. But as you get further away, it looks right. It's, it's, it's the same thing. It, that's what you got to get used to in your head. And it took me a long time. I mean, this is my fifth year of painting. This is uh, two and a half, maybe three years of this style of painting. Impressionistic fig figurative paintings like this. But even down here in the rocks, I mean... This up close, this stuff doesn't make sense. It just looks like a bunch of paint smeared. But as you get further and further away, it looks like the uh, light's actually hitting individual rocks. And on the next time, we may come come in here and carve out a little bit with some darks and midtones and stuff just to detail this up a little bit. And we'll add a little bit up in this area. We'll add a little bit of uh, lighter colored to bring this this water out so it looks like it's really sheening off of here. But we don't want to lose this dark area, and we don't want to lose this dark area, because that's what's pushing our eye up into the painting 
to concentrate on these two guys. And back here where we put the collar in earlier, I mean, it, we didn't go to no great lengths or anything. We just added some collar just to show that some sun's hitting back here. And we added some dark back here. And that's it. Same thing up in here. This is this is just a, a, a tree area, a little another little ridge area or whatever. There's nothing nothing major to it. You don't bog yourself down on that. But when you pull it back, it actually looks like a clump of trees or another hillside coming across there. And that's the trick. That's the trick to everything. Don't bog down trying to create too much, unless you're going for really uh, uh, realism painting, which which these aren't. But I mean, it gets the it gets the point across, and I'm, I'm, they make uh, they make beautiful paintings, even though I did it. But I, I just I, I love how it does. Well, anyways, if you have any comments, questions, or want to talk about anything next time. Uh, before we finish this painting up because we'll, we'll have to let this set for a few hours or I might wait till tomorrow to come back to it but uh, and we'll we'll put the last little highlighty areas in to really pop this painting out and uh, we'll be ready to sign it and uh, call it good but uh, if you have any questions comments concerns or want or for something you want to learn or something else in a future painting if if you want me to see me do it uh, leave leave me a comment and I'll get back to you and we'll we'll talk about about it in the next video. All right, we'll see you later.